this is 10 Minute Tutorials. Today we are going to be going over Matter Overdrive. Yes, this is Matter Overdrive for 1.7.10. And the reason you were here, or one of two reasons, either you've seen my other video and you realized how bad the quality was and you saw a link that said, hey, there's a higher quality video here that doesn't have absolutely cruddy mono channel sound. Or you're like me when I first tried to play the mod and looked everywhere trying to find anything on Matter Overdrive and couldn't find anything anywhere. Because let's be honest, there's not a lot of information out there on it. I check the Feed the Bees wiki, there's nothing there. I go on YouTube, there's nothing there. Now you guys have this video to rely on because this is an absolutely awesome mod that deserves a lot of credit. Now I did hear that uh, the mod had been basically put to rest, but then as of January of this year, I guess it has been revitalized by a certain couple YouTubers that have it in their mod pack and everybody wants to know more about it. So we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. The very first thing you're going to want to make for yourself is the data pad. The data pad is like the book for Matter Overdrive. Give it a little right click and it will open up to this screen right here. It will tell you about all the little machines. So yeah, the information is here for you, but it's much easier to watch a video that's only a couple minutes long and will tell you all about how to set everything up. I get it. That's why I did it because I looked for the same thing, but it will give you the rundown of most of the stuff in the mod right? The problem is there are some things that are unfinished. Like there's no information on the armor. There's no information on the machines. As it says, the weapons don't give you any information. I'm sorry, not the weapons, but the tools don't give you any information. Now there is information on the gun, but it's not the guns, but they're not totally as clear. So that's why we're here. So anyways, the data pad is what you're going to want to start off with. If you have any questions and you're in game and don't want to go back and check a YouTube video. Now, Get, with that being said, there are two new ores that are introduced into ma by Matter Overdrive. You have the Dilithium Ore and the Tritanium Ore. And basically these break down and smelt down like any other ore. Well, sorry, the Dilithium gives you crystals, but the Tritanium gives you uh, ingots when smelted down. And that is the basis for like 90% of the crafting here. If you can see, if I just pick this random recipe, Oh, that doesn't have a recipe. This random recipe. Um, yeah, I use a little bit of iron, but like these Heisenberg compressors, they use this guy, the dilithium or the dilithium crystals, and this guy is made from titanium ingots as well as titanium plate, which is two ingots. So these are the basis you need to start going and getting those resources right off the bat, right? Once you do get those resources, you're gonna to want to make yourselves a couple quick blocks to start. First, you're gonna to want to make yourself a matter analyzer. Second, and I'm gonna place this backwards because for whatever reason this block paste is backwards. Um, you're gonna want yourself a pattern storage. Third, you're gonna want a pattern drive that obviously goes in the pattern storage. But these things are gonna need power to get started. Now you do have the option of using any other mods power um, and you can run them in you know, one of two ways. You can either just plop them in here like this and you'll see that the power's already going up or you have the option of just running power in like, hey, get back here. Like so with any, you know, power, you know, cable, we'll, we'll grab some flux duct just as an example. But uh, I can grab some leadstone flux duct here and put this in here and that will also power up your units and you'll see the power starts going up. However, the, it doesn't work on the block connect concept. So if I was to want to power both of these, I would have to run it over like that. Now the mod itself does introduce a couple ways to create power right off the bat. And those ways are actually pretty, pretty simple and pretty easy to get power. However, charging them, well, that's the issue, okay? Because, oh, let me get my uh, matter screen back up here. The first option you have really, really basic right off the bat is a battery, right? Battery is really, really simple to make. It's just a couple of the titanium ingots, gold and redstone, and you can make one of those. Or I highly agree, if you've got the materials to make this, you probably have the materials to make this guy right here. And it's one of those with a couple of plates and some more of the crystals and the high capacity. High capacity holds 1.05 million RF, where the low capacity or the regular battery only holds uh, uh, half a million, right? So basically you're doubling up. And instead of making two of these to get that, you can just make one of those, right? But the other option you have are these solar panels. Solar panels are pretty freaking simple to make. Also, most of the stuff is pretty simple right off the bat to make. 
um, machine casings and some micro or isolinear Mark II secret circuits, and I'll explain how to make those in just a second. You're gonna have to create this guy, the inscriber. Now the inscriber can also be powered in any way, um, just like the rest of them, whatever. Without power, it's pretty much useless. But if we throw one of our creative cells in here, you'll see that it starts, you know, going up. And basically what the inscriber does is it upgrades your uh, Mark circuits. So anyways, as you can see, I've got solar power. These things are now charging thanks to our solar power and they are gonna be good to go, right? So these two blocks are where you're really gonna be starting everything. The first block here is the pattern storage. And like I said, you're gonna need a pattern drive. And what this is gonna do is hold the root of all information for matter overdrive for you. You're gonna create yourself this little matter scanner here. And if you see, as I'm right clicking, it's doing nothing because it's not linked to anything and it's not able to send its information anywhere. But if I throw it in here, you'll see that it is now online. And if I grab it and if I hold it against a block, you'll see it's reading this block, grass block, what matter, one kilometer, and then it claims the block. And it now says my progress is at 10%. If I do this nine more times or now eight more times, it's gonna keep eating those blocks and it's gonna increase it. Now the other option you have to do is you can come over to your matter analyzer here. And what you're gonna do is go over here and throw your matter scanner in here to link it to your matter analyzer. Then what I can do is cr like just create a stack of blocks and I can go throw them in my matter analyzer and it's gonna use up some power, but right now it's currently you know gaining power or whatever. And it's gonna start analyzing this matter. In a second, you're gonna see some white bars here pop up and they're gonna basically be reading this matter for you, right? And once it's done reading the matter, it's gonna send the information over here to the pattern drive. And all of a sudden that grass block at 30% should jump up to 50%. I believe it does 20% per block. I believe that's what the actual number is. So we're gonna go ahead and pause real quick and wait for that to finish up so we can just kind of see that. And I'll do a couple others because we're gonna lead into why matter, our analyzing matter is so important. Oh, and I did forget one thing as I started building this up. The one thing you do need to do, or this matter analyzer cannot communicate with your pattern storage is you need to connect them. So you grab your uh, matter network cable here, give them a quick connect, and then you can basically put your dirt in or whatever. It'll start to analyze it and it'll be done. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just do these really quick while we're here. These are the little white bars that'll start popping up as soon as it starts analyzing. And basically once this is done, you will have it in your uh, pattern drive right here. And it says like right now I've got grass block 100%. So if I hover over that and I hold shift, it tells me it's a matter of one kilometer, kilomass. I don't know what that actually is for. But anyways, while that's processing, I guess we can just stay here because the molecular inscriber here is the next thing you're gonna need. And this one is pretty simple itself as well. Basically, we now know how to make the uh, isolinear Mark one circuit because we made our data pad, right? But there are upgrades like the two, the three, and the four. Well, the way you do that is with your molecular inscriber. If I were to throw my one in here and grab myself a piece of gold, like so, and put it in there, that's gonna start um, the work bar right here, and this is gonna upgrade the Mark one to the Mark two. Now, just like that, we're gonna need a diamond and an emerald to get to our levels three and four. So a two then gets a diamond added to it and that will make the level three. And then the three gets an emerald added to it and that makes a level four. Now this over here is still eating up our diamonds, but you can see that diamond is at 40%. It only took two to get to 40% where you scan it with your uh, matter scanner here like this, and we do, oh, I gotta do a different block. And I do it like on this titanium plate over here. I'm getting some weird visual glitches there. I don't know what's going on here. But anyways, you're only gonna get 10% uh, per, but when you throw it in the uh, matter analyzer, you're gonna get 20% uh, per. And so by the time that that one's just about done, you'll see it jump up to 60% there. And so basically it just keeps going and going and going until you're up at 100%. Once you get to, oops, once you get to 100%, then 
uh, you'll basically be able to use the next machine that we're going to show you right now. This is the matter decompressor, right? And what this basically does is if I put some dirt blocks in here, it's going to break each one of these blocks into the one kilometer or kilomass that it's worth. So as you can see, it's at four out of a uh, thousand twenty four, right? This is actually where we get the basis for the mod, what the mod's all about, which is matter, matter itself. Now matter itself can then get pumped into this guy right here, the matter replicator. And as you can see, all that matter is now transferring over here. And if I throw this guy in here, I can link it into the system basically. And I grab myself a power source. This guy can actually start replicating matter because I have my matter scanner here. If I were to link it into my system, then it could replicate anything that's in my pattern storages. And since my diamond block is just about to be 100%, we can take 200, I believe it was 250, 256 kilo masses, I guess, per diamond. So if I had 256 dirt blocks or grass blocks or cobblestone, they're all one kilo mass, we could then make ourselves a diamond. I think it's pretty cheap. For four stacks of dirt or cobblestone, we can make ourselves one diamond. But this is one important thing that I want to show you right here. As you can see, these are not connecting. Well, this one will, but as you can see, they're kind of like all over the place. They're not connecting. They can only connect from point to point. We cannot connect from here to here and then continue the connection all the way over here. So what we do need to do is whoopsie. Well, we don't need that anymore we need to make ourselves this guy right here, the matter network router. And I'm going to go ahead and put that like that. And you'll see it connects in. But once again, if I place a block right here, it won't connect. But if I were to do say this, like, whoops, like, so right, that'll connect into that side right there. Right. And then if I do this down here and this is where it gets really funny and you got to kind of play with it to get stuff to connect correctly. Um, it can be very, very funky, but what I can do just for the sake of the tutorial is just go up over like this. Now those two are connected through this block and then I can come off. Oops. I can come out on this side over here and then connect this guy. So now all three of them are interconnected, right? pretty freaking nifty if you ask me now you can see diamonds are done right and now we have the ability to make diamonds and i need to get rid of this real quick because they're we're going to talk about upgrades in just a second all right so you put your blocks in here oh let me stop wasting diamonds it doesn't really matter but you put your blocks in there it goes into matter overdrive but the only problem is a pattern drive only holds two so basically one pattern storage could hold up to 12 recipes so it's kind of what you want to make and how you want to make it that's totally up to you but you're going to need more pattern storage if you want to do more than 12 items and they're not that expensive so it's well worth it but once you do actually have your oops your uh replicator done and you've got enough materials and you've made enough matter and as a matter of fact let me go ahead and uh i psh, whoops okay let me try that again i meant to make a stack like that uh there we go so we want to make up enough uh matter here to make you know something over here a diamond perhaps so one thing you can do is get something like, oh, I don't know, a simple hopper. Hoppers work really, really well. And basically all you gotta do is throw your little hopper here and throw your items in there and they'll just auto fill right into this as it's emptying, they'll fill right up. And when you have enough matter to make something, you're gonna want to grab this guy, the pattern monitor. The pattern monitor just plugs into the system just like any other network cable and you give a little right click and it'll show you the items that you have the ability to make. So if I were to click on diamond and request to make one, I'll click one and nothing's going to happen. Well, why is nothing going to happen? Because this doesn't have enough matter in it. Once it does have enough matter, it can make one. But if I were to click a grass block, which only, you know, takes one and request it, it'll actually have enough matter over here to start making it, except I forgot to send the request. 
So send one there, make me a dirt. And then you'll see it's working. You get a little, uh, nausea, I believe it is. And you know, it's, it's kind of radioactive in this area, but then I can click and there's my one piece of dirt. Pretty freaking snazzy. Now, once we actually have enough of this matter in here, which it's going to be just a minute, we'll actually be able to request a diamond and it'll do the same thing. Now, how do you, um, not get this nausea effect and the hunger effect and all that stuff. You might ask. Um, I was going to tell you about the armor and the way to like, you know, uh, prevent yourself from getting the, the sickness or whatever, but you can actually just add some titanium plates. I believe it takes up to five. Yeah. And then basically when this thing then creates, uh, an item, it'll actually less likely to affect you. As you can see, I got no effect that time. I believe five is, it might be like uh, one is 20%, two is 40%. I don't know the actual statistics on it, but it will reduce the chance of it uh, causing you harm. So uh, there was one more thing I just kind of wanted to show you for this episode or for this part of the tutorial. And that is, well, actually there's two. First of all, there's this matter transport pipe. And then second of all, it is these chests right here. They're just kind of fun. Now, if let's say I wanted to have a couple of these guys, right? And I didn't have a way or desire to set them right next to each other. I can place this guy right here. And with the use of these matter transport pipes, I can just connect them like this. And then they have the ability to send matter over. Now, obviously this one's not sending matter over cause it's accepting it, but are you emptied yet? No, but it's okay. If I were to connect this guy, where they do actually connect more than one, this one can send to either location. As you can see up my tooltip, this one is now getting matter through the matter transport pipe. So basically, you get find out what matter is in each item, you save it on a pattern storage, you then break down the matter, and you can then replicate and make new items. It's it's pretty it's it's pretty cool. That that's yeah, that's all I can really say. It's pretty cool. This, this mod is so underrated in my opinion. Like, come on, why are you there? I'm just making sure I have enough because I want to make at least one diamond. Eh, it's not going to get there in time. It's okay. So anyways, this is the first portion of the mod. You have your power, you have your uh, matter analyzer, your pattern storage, your matter decomposer, your matter replicator, and your, well, your matter replicator. You've got all the pipes and how they interconnect. These guys, I'm just going to tell you straight up, are a pain in the butt to try to figure out how to do anything close to each other, but it is possible using the Matter uh, Network Router. And yes, oh, finally, these fun little chests right here. Now, honestly, there's no need for them. They're, they're just a little bit bigger than um, your normal uh, chest. I believe there's one extra row in it, but I like them just because, first of all, you can color code them. The recipes are really, really simple. It's the chest with a couple of the titanium plates and then whatever color you want. But this, I just love that the, they have that sound. Like it's just, it's just so fun. That's, that's honestly what it comes down to. So you can do your chest in any one of the 16 colors in the mod. So guys, that is basically the breakdown of the very start of Matter Overdrive and what you're going to need to really get going. Once you basically can start replicating matter there, it's just endless on basically creating, you know, whatever you want to do. If you had a cobblestone uh, quarry or whatever, or a cobblestone generator that was just constantly pumping cobblestone into the matter decomposer, and then basically you could just create diamonds on a whim. So whatever item you want or whatever mass you want, you'll be able to just create them like crazy. Now I do want to do it before I go. I want to go ahead and throw in um, some, ah, no, you, ah, where is it? Oh, the yeah. So anyways, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this first portion. When you come back in the next portion, we're going to start getting into the, uh, the power system because I think that one itself basically requires an entire episode all to itself. It is absolutely amazing, but at the same time, it's kind of intricate and you got to really, you know, have a good understanding of how to set it up and how it works. So until next time, guys, I'm Slider Havoc. This is Matter Overdrive from 10 Minute Tutorials, and I am out of here. Peace.